I'd like to talk a little bit today about the ramifications of uh, what has come to be known as uh, climate gains. First of all, they were purloined or stolen or leaked emails coming out of the uh, University of East Anglia Climate Research Unit. And uh, these were published, and they definitely suggest that climate data have been withheld and manipulated. phrases coming out of this email was, I'm getting hassled to release climate research unit station temperature data. Don't any of you three tell people that the UK has a Freedom of Information Act? So it's kind of a childish kind of thing, but I'm sure that all of us, at one time or another, have uh, written an email and sent it off to somebody not, not paying any attention to what was going on. Nonetheless, this was very upsetting. I've just completed Mike's trick of adding in the real temps to hide the decline. That, I, I put trick in, uh, there, highlighting it so that, so that uh, uh, we could discuss that for a moment. What I don't like about this is that it implies someone took out some information in order to make this record, this record look a little bit better in their eyes. And that's a no -no. sharing of data for research and education. This is very important for us. It fosters scientific advances. It has all kinds of, of benefit if, if we do that. Data should be entered into the public domain as soon as possible. I have data that will be helpful for someone to check my research. I have an obligation to release that data. All of my career, I have never had that opportunity come up where I can't release data. We need to stick to our scientific principles. We need to improve our peer review process. And we need, and I believe that we need to expand the stakeholder's role in some way, perhaps, to keep us all honest. confidence in what we are doing. So science policy, we've made some mistakes here. We've ignored some perceptions that models are black boxes. They're very complex. They look like black boxes. Data are inaccessible. The IPCC is biased, conflicted, pushing political agendas. These are perceptions of people, and we have not addressed those. Reproducibility and tenet of science has been ignored. It's very, very difficult with these climate models to try to reproduce what someone else has done. And uh, this is the complexity we have to deal with, but it's a perception that we need to address. Alternative ideas are unwelcome and held to a higher standard. When I see some of my colleagues around the world who want to attack some of these <coughs> concepts, sometimes it is difficult to get published or to have a uh, uh, have a uh, proposal approved. And what we have on the road to certainty, it's, it's under construction. And, uh, and it won't be uh, certain for a long time. will vary based a little bit on human behavior. 
And this is a model, we could say, of human behavior. I don't know, I, I don't know how to predict, uh, you know, 50 years from now, how we're all going to be thinking. I think that if we are going to reduce this uncertainty, build the credibility of what we are talking about, we need to have maybe one more modeling group, one more Global Institute for Climate Analysis. And this cannot be fully supported by government. It has to be supported partly from the private sector. Like we are allowing different ideas to pop into the system. We have to address all of those perceived mistakes that I mentioned. We have to share that funding and oversight. Uh, since in the last month or two since you submitted the abstract, uh, we've seen a, a few other IPCC scandals. We've seen, for example, Himalayan glaciers where IPCC relied on solely a WWF paper while calling a scientific study out of India voodoo science that reached a different conclusion. We've seen them uh, rely on similar uh, partisan papers alone for assertions that the Amazon rainforest is disappearing, etc. In light of these mounting scandals, I'm wondering what your thought is in terms of whether IPCC is a viable uh, voice in the future, whether there need to be some very serious reforms, or what, what do you see happening with IPCC, ideally? There will be some reforms. Uh, I think that there are going to be big changes in the peer review process for the IPCC. Um, there, there will be, uh, uh, there are uh, calls for the head of Pachari. Uh, you know, there, some of my colleagues have, have written letters saying that he needs to be taken off the job because he wasn't uh, being that attentive. There are other of my colleagues who are saying that since, since the first IPCC report, where I led the technical review of that report, there has been no overall technical review of the IPCC. I, I don't know for sure, I, I, uh, but, but because I'm being told that, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there are other reforms that have to be done here as well. Maybe we have to, we have to go back to some of those perceptions that I mentioned. We tend to get a little uh, full of ourselves, a little uh, too much hubris, perhaps. Uh, I, I am confident, basically, in, in the uh, in the IPCC and in the report that, and in the research that we are doing, uh, but I want to see uh, reform. I want to see action being taken here to stop that kind of thing. So I think it will happen.